Hello, my friends. Russians are running away, leaving their positions on the south part from the Bakhmut city, near to Klishivka. Today, the Ukrainian forces performed a counterattack, and Russians were not expecting that. And here we have the video of it. You can see Russian soldiers over here, and the Ukrainian tank is over here. It is very close, and Russians for sure didn't expect our tank to run on them. Let's watch it. So. Uh, so we show the music, just in case of the copyright strikes. So this is our tank, and Russians are leaving their positions in panic. And yeah, Prigozhin said and confirmed that the Russian brigade, the 72nd brigade of the regular Russian army that was responsible to secure that perimeter, they've just left their positions and Wagner's have to send their own soldiers, but because of the miscommunications, Wagner's had severe losses. He said that per day they lost 500 Wagner soldiers in that area. He also said that with those losses they were able to stop the Ukrainian army from the further assault, but still they lost 3 square kilometers of the area. After the tank attack, Ukrainian army landed more soldiers, and it's the first time that I see Bradleys in action. So this is the Bradley. I'll zoom in, I'll try to do it at least. Sorry guys, I can't, but I'll put the bigger picture on the screen for you to check it out. I think that it's the Bradley infantry vehicle. So what Wagner's did right away Way, they sent four BTRs with their infantry and they were also demolished three infantry vehicles left the positions and one totally kaput. It is just the beginning of the country attack that was performed by the Ukrainian forces today. So where did it happen? You can see the Bakhmut city over here and this flank near to Klishivka was controlled by the Russian army, the regular forces. It is mostly still under their control, but today Ukraine assaulted from this position towards Klishivka and we took 3 kilometers. There is no update for the military map for this time, but we're gonna see it tomorrow for sure. And we even got the video confirmation, so initial assault happened in the gray area. So this is the position of the Ukrainian tank, and this is the position of the Russian extra forces that they sent to that area, and Ukraine gained some sort of the territory. Before it was like that in this area. So definitely Ukraine continued to use their forces for the small counterattacks that are happening around the Bakhmut city. If we cut the flanks for the Russian army or it's to say for the Wagner army in that area, we may encircle the Wagner army inside the Bakhmut city. Prigozhin told about it many times, and this is his biggest fear. Plus, today he said that there is not enough ammunition and nobody sends anything. And he got the paper from Gerasimov that if he leaves the positions, he would be prosecuted according to the Russian law as the traitor. But he says that in any case, they will leave if they want, and for now they've decided to stay for a few days longer in the Bahamut city. So I wouldn't trust the words of Prigozhin, but there is definitely the conflict between him and the regular Russian army forces, also FSB. It means that this situation is great for Ukraine. Plus there was the other video that I'm unable to show it to you here. So near to Hromova, it's the very important hotspot. Russians captured the positions, but our artillery fight back and we were able to free the positions using just artillery systems. And drones, obviously, because they deliver some of the goods on the Russian warriors. In Klishivka itself, the artillery systems targeted the Russian ammunition depots. Unfortunately, we have to target also the local church, because Russians put their fuel supplies and ammunition inside, so yes, it's very bad, but we can rebuild this temple afterwards. This is not the historical church or something like that, this is the modern day construction. Russian army has started to use the special fire shells also on the south part of Ukraine before we saw those images mostly coming from the Bakhmut city, but recently they were spotted on the south part. Probably that is how they want to demine the fields near to Ulaya Pole. We have the report from the commander Beletsky, who was one of the founders of the Azov regiment. Now he is the commander of the 3rd Assault Ukrainian Brigade that you saw in the first video that was fighting against the 72nd Russian Brigade on the south part from the Bakhmut city. He confirms that the 72nd 
22nd Russian Brigade was completely demolished in that area. The Ukrainian assault brigade was able to capture some land 3 by 2.5 kilometers. And the Wagner soldiers who came to plug this open hole in the front lines had severe losses. As I say to you on the video, we see just the beginning of the fight. By the way, my friends, please subscribe for my Telegram channel, because there I upload more information and also there is some unique content that I cannot upload on YouTube. The link is in the video description just below, or I'll put the QR code somewhere on the screen, but probably you're watching me from your mobile device, so go to the video description, you will find the Telegram in the link. Telegram is my main alternate resource and you'll be able to find me over there if something goes wrong with my YouTube channel. So, about the Bahmut area, we have the fantastic news, finally. Alright, about the Russian parade, we all expected something interesting that might have happened in Moscow, but it didn't. Putin decided to attend the parade, but he was accompanied by other leaders of the ex-Soviet countries. Here we have the leader of the Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, so where there was Lukashenko and the leader of Armenia as well. And Putin is here, the wanted person for the war crimes. The Ukrainian Ministry of the Foreign Affairs already stated that it was the unfriendly act towards our country from the leaders of the other ex-Soviet republics who attended this parade. I think it is well understandable Russia launched their rocket attack recently on our cities the last night and the next day all of those leaders come and greet Putin. Putin is just as evil as Hitler or maybe even worse. And it seems like those guys simply do not care. I watched the Russian propaganda, they say that Kazakhstan will be next after Ukraine. Well, for them the war is far away and just yesterday they finally commit the decision to arrive to Moscow. I don't know what levers of influence Putin used to make them come to Moscow. By the way, this video is quite interesting. It shows how Putin and his friends were scared about the explosion. But it wasn't really the explosion, it was just the music on parade, but they perceived it as some explosion. The sound was pretty much similar, so let's listen to this and let's watch. And music plays, but first it was like boom with the bass drum, and they are like, okay, what is happening? What is happening? <laughs> oh, it's okay, it's just the music, we can go. <laughs> this guy, are you sure? <laughs> this video appeared on the Telegram channels and on the Twitter today showing the burning Suhoi Su-24 tactical bomber. It happened on the Russian territory, far away from the Ukrainian border, and no drones were used to do so, so clearly it is the sabotage performed by someone. About the military parade itself, in Moscow there was a single tank on the Red Square, and it is the legendary T-34, the tank from the World War II. But in some other cities, Russia still used their T-9 tanks or T-72 tanks for their parade. Russia showed some of the rockets, uh, Tiger vehicles as usual, and no armadas, nothing. And also it was the shortest parade in the Moscow history. It lasted for 40 minutes before they took at least 3 hours. Let's go back in the history to year 2010. Here you can see the Ukrainian army in the Moscow parade. Just 13 years ago it was the big international event. After Ukraine there was the Poland, after Poland UK, after UK the United States of America and France. Now I'm looking at this footage and for me it was like in different life in a parallel reality or something and now we have this dramatic change mainly because of the small circle of crazy people inside the Kremlin and Russians who support them. Unfortunately, there are lots of the Russians who support the current regime in Russia. They were brainwashed by the Russian propaganda for a very long time, for 
decades. By the way, the air part of the parade was also cancelled this time. Again, Putin said that Russia was attacked by the Western countries by NATO, Anglo Anglo Saxons. He just continued to say the same thing around and all of that conspiracy theories. But the fact is the fact. They just attack the Ukraine, the country that has no nuclear missiles, the country that is much smaller with their resources compared to the Russian Federation. And you know why I don't like the military parades any longer than I was a kid? I really admired that stuff, uh, that we were proud that we won the second, sorry, the Great Patriotic War. But then I learned some history, I understood that Russia is as responsible for the Second World War as the Nazi Germany, because they've started it together from annexation of Poland. And Hitler just betrayed the Soviet Union and attacked them. Nevertheless, the Western countries supported Russia, they provided Moscow with land lease, and that is how and only how Russia was able to win. Without the military help, Moscow for sure would have been taken by the NATO Germany. But now they're not speaking about uh, that help. They're saying that it was them and them only who won this war. And 9th of May became the pure propaganda of Russianism or Russian peace around. Did you know that the parades on the Red Square happened just four times during the Soviet times? In 1945, then Soviets took the race stock in Berlin, then in 1965, 1985 and 1990. As you can see, they happen just on anniversaries, 20 years after victory, 40 days after victory and 45 years after the victory. Why it was like that during the Soviet times? Because people struggled during that war and there were many around who participated in the war and who lost their loved ones. And definitely it was just a sad anniversary for most of the people in the Soviet Union. Yes, it became the national holiday afterwards, but it was the holiday with the tears on the eyes. Even for the Soviet Union, for this evil empire, let's say, it was understandable that it's better not to use this day as the influence factor or propaganda on their people. But after Putin got his power and after this dramatic change in attitude towards the Western countries, the celebrations of the parades became yearly. Unlike the Soviet Union, Russia doesn't have the ideology behind it. You may call it the Russian peace, but there is also nothing behind it. What is Russian peace? How can you just understand that? For communism, it was achievable goal, as they put it, for the Russian society. There were even many books written. The communism was as the subject in the school. Lenin was like a Jesus Christ for the Russian people, and Marx and Engels were their gods. But here, just the brainwashed people watching crazy stuff from TV, the police state, and very weak leader. The country is not really strong, what they have is left from the Soviet Union, I mean nuclear warheads. Their leaders and officials, they were able to build their future and future for their kids, not in Russia but abroad. Even the children of the military officials, of intelligence officials, are now living in the Western countries, in NATO countries. For me, it's even hard to call Russian regime as totalitarianism. I think it's just the pure kleptocracy, where they're just thieves who took the power. And to keep this country more or less together, to have the opportunity to get more money from Russians and from the country resources, they start to put the old books on the table and mix them with the very old books. I mean religion, communism, the victory in the Second World War. So they put everything together to unite ununited, the Russia itself. So after this regime collapse, and I'm sure it will be like that, it shouldn't continue for a very long time, the system like that simply cannot live for a very long time. In that case, uh, Russian people will see that it's just the fake decoration of their country. So all of that that was uniting Russia for a very long time will just collapse in one day. And that will put the Russian state into uncontrolled dive that may lead even to the country collapse. At least I see it like that, my friends. Yeah, I'm deviating from the topic. 
the news. One more news today that shocked me at first. Prigozhin and Wagner officials reported that there was the harmless attack on the building with the Ukrainian prisoners of war. Actually, according to the United Nations uh, official articles, prisoners should be moved out from the front lines. But after some time, Russian side says that all of the prisoners are okay, they haven't been wounded. I immediately recall the tragedy in Elenivka, also very close to the front lines. Then Russia just blown up the building with the Ukrainian war prisoners. And still, they deny the access for the international organizations and United Nations to visit that place. Russia have decided to start the production of the Shahid drones on the Belarus territory. The problem for them is that the factory is located very close to the Ukrainian border, so for us it's not a big deal to eliminate that factory. Alright, even on the Russian maps we may see how Ukraine performed a successful mission on the south, so we took this part around 3 square kilometers of the territory, it's quite a lot. And we are getting closer to Kleshivka, if we take the city we'll cut all of this part. One more Russian resource and here you can see the same thing. Today there was the great activity of the surveillance airplanes flying in the Black Sea. It was the British AVAX airplane, the Boeing 707, and also the American Global Hawk drone that was flying very close to the Russian bases in Sochi and Novorossiysk. The British airplane went very close to Crimea. Because we need to have the live picture of the rockets that Russia may fire towards our position plus we need to understand the position of the Russian airplanes and that is done with the help of our allies who fly in the Black Sea and provide that information to Ukrainian general command. President Zelensky in his today's speech said that the United States of America gave Ukraine 1.2 billion dollars military help. We'll not get the money, we'll have weaponry for that amount of the money. That's the second biggest package since the beginning of this year. The first one was announced by the Joseph Biden, then he visited Kyiv. It was something around 2 billion dollars and here is 1.2 billion. And President Zelensky said that there is something in this aid that he cannot speak about. My friends, now press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job, you may find some of the links in the video description just below. You may also support me on Patreon or on the sponsorship on this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your help and for your awesome support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.